The picture that we got of orientation in Part 1 is changed completely when we consider the effect that incoming information has in the form of signals. The five systems within orientation must be looked at organically and not mechanically. Cognition, the environment, and goals all play a part. Any model that only deals with one of the blades or the goals fails to grasp the whole situation. Complicating all of this is the fact that soccer is an adversarial sport. You have a live, active opponent who's capable of misleading you with false information. Players routinely send false signals. They're either ambiguous or they're a lie. When an opponent takes that into their orientation, they get farther and farther away from reality on the ground. This feed-forward path between observation and new information represents the spotlight of attention. It's the data that we've decided to take into consideration. While the quantity and quality of data that's being fed forward can change, one thing doesn't change, and that is the flow never stops. It may speed up, it may slow down, but it never stops. This narrative view of the OODA loop brings up two important points. First, there's no such thing as instantaneous. We're always dealing with a data flow. We need to think in intervals, events, and time scales because time matters. The second point is that there's no such thing as a clean slate. History has a way of sh determining our present and helping to shape our future. In the next lesson, we're going to look at where all of this energy goes into decisions.